Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your Oshkosh City Manager. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Community Media and City Manager, Mark Roloff. Thank you for joining us on your city manager's report your source for the most current things going on here in oshkosh as well as a preview for the upcoming city council meeting agenda i'm your host emily mikowski joined as always by your city manager mark roloff so as always mark thanks so much for joining us today great to be here emily happy new year happy new year to you too and uh it's great to be back we took uh, kind of a, a little break over the holidays here um, we've got plenty to talk about. We'll go ahead and dive into our hot topics for the first half of today's show. Take a little break and return with a review of the council meeting agenda for Tuesday, January 13th, 2015. And it sounds weird saying 2015 too, Mark. <laughs> yeah, we got to get used to that now I as well. I know. And with the new year, we have received uh, some very cold weather. Um, and that's actually the first topic that we have to talk about here. Um, we, we received a lot of cold weather last year and we did have a lot of issues with frozen laterals and things like that. Um, so what, what's some of your tips and advice for us as we're moving into this cold weather season here? Well, so far we haven't had uh, frozen laterals uh, to my knowledge, but we have had some frozen mains because mm -hmm. the streets are still exposed to the, the elements and so the frost drives down pretty quickly as the weather gets cold and remains cold. So the threat of water laterals uh, or water laterals freezing is there, but we haven't seen it yet. But the water mains are, are gonna be very real. Uh, what we would ask people to do is keep an eye out for something. If you see some water percolating uh, out of the pavement, you know, please let us know right away. Mm -hmm. And certainly if you have any issues where your water is not turning on, then there's probably a, a water lateral problem. But you know, during the day you can call our water distribution division at 232-5330, but after hours uh, you, you have to call a different number. So that's 236-5165. We'll get somebody out there and I was uh, very encouraged. Uh, we did have a water main break uh, the other day on the north side of town and somebody called. It was just before quitting time at City Hall, but the person related to our water distribution folks and were out there within a half hour mm -hmm. and they were digging it up and that is not the most pleasant job in the world. It's pretty wet and cold and Especially nasty. right now, I mean, to be outside when it's wet like that, I can imagine. But our water distribution folks are very dedicated and they got it fixed pretty promptly and got some really good comments on social media. Yes, we've seen a few pictures of our guys working on social media on mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, it's great to see that and so uh, we love to to hear the good the good work that our employees are doing um, and one question that uh, we had was last year we had a water running you know call is that something that we're gonna need to be doing right now should we be running our water to keep from freezing right now I don't think that that's necessary but you know certainly stay tuned because uh, if it gets worse we'll we'll certainly take a look at that but usually that happens when we do start having water lateral issues but we haven't seen that yet so let's cross our fingers and hope that we we don't see it at all this year but uh, we're just going to keep an eye on it. So no, don't you don't have to leave the water open uh, just yet. But if you're going away for an extended period of time, it probably doesn't hurt maybe to ask somebody to check in on your house and you know run the faucets uh, every day or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you do see any of the mains uh, broken or any signs of a broken main, you can call those numbers that we did show earlier. Um, that right there, two three two fifty three thirty or two three six fifty one sixty five after hours. Um, and now also kind of relating to the winter season, um, it's that time of year that uh, everyone's taking their Christmas decorations down, their holiday decorations. Uh, Christmas tree collection is going on right now and continues through the following week, Mark. Correct. Uh, so it's, it's collected on your regular garbage day. So now through uh, Friday, January 16th, but you know, please make sure it's not buried in the snow. Get it out of any plastic bag. I know people like to cover them before they get them out, but take the plastic bag off and of course make sure that your favorite decorations that your a child made in first grade are <laughs> removed properly because you don't want us to take that to the landfill. No. And of course tree stands and things like that. Even if you've given up on your tree stand, you want to get rid of it, throw it in the regular trash. The uh, We mulch and uh, use this for cover so we don't want to have anything uh, extra hanging on the tree. No, and uh, these they'll be coming to pick up the trees on the same day as the garbage collection. Correct. Uh, so just put it out there on the same day that your, your garbage would regularly be collected. Um, you can also check out the website for the uh, yard waste 
drop-off site. Um, they've got their seasonal hours right now, and you can find out how to get a permit for that as well if you want to drop anything off over there. Um, Mark, our next topic here uh, is dealing with elections. Uh, we've got a primary election coming up for the mayor's election. Yeah, there are three candidates for mayor, and uh, whenever there's one more than uh, than the number that of face-off, in this case, uh, three or more, there is a primary. So our primary will be scheduled for Tuesday, February 17th, uh, with the general election on Tuesday, April 7th. The top two finishers will, will move on to the April election. Mm -hmm. And in addition, uh, their, uh, OCMS is cooperating with the League of Women Voters to hold uh, a, a debate, a mayoral forum, and that's going to be on uh, February 5th, which is a Thursday. That'll be here at City Hall, room, uh, I believe it's 406, uh, even though what it says up there, it's room <laughs> 406, uh, basically up in the council chambers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll be live uh, on OCMS. And of course, people are invited to come and uh, I believe ask questions if, uh, if time permits. So uh, we certainly want to encourage people to be informed about the election and everything. And uh, don't forget the primary is February 17th. Those typically have really low turnout. So really? it's important for people to be aware that your vote counts no matter when and to uh, make sure that you vote on the, uh, on the uh, 17th of February. Yes, and so before you're voting, make sure you check out the Candidates Forum Thursday, February 5th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, you can also listen to it on the radio at 101.9 uh, WOCT-FM, um, and it'll also be up on the OCMS website. So a uh, lot of options there to get yourself educated, and we encourage you guys to get out and vote. Uh, Mark, our next update um, is the field operations facility. Um, it looks a little bit different now. It's kind of covered in snow, but uh, what's the update? What's the latest on that right now? We're, uh, in, we're just about done with what we're calling phase two of the project itself. And uh, there, you probably haven't seen much recently because most of the work has now been done on the inside or the interior of the site. Um, the phase two is additional space for uh, vehicular parking and various individual or storage areas, tire storage, small engine repair, and uh, the paving shop, carpenter area, and a manual wash bay. Those are pretty much getting done. In fact, uh, we expect that they will be done in the next week or two, um, and a, a full completion of that is probably mid-January. Mm -hmm. But there's also a third phase uh, that's going to be done this year, and that's some of the accessory buildings, the cold storage building, the salt shed that, uh, you know, right now our salt sheds are scattered throughout the city. We're going to have one big salt shed right there on site, mm -hmm. uh, as well as wash bay and lift equipment in the main facility. And then, of course, the final landscaping that you need to, to put it all on top. And, of course, that won't take place until the summer. But mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the plan for 2015. But uh, we're still making progress, and uh, we'll... Uh, continue until uh, it's done sometime late summer, early fall. Great. Well, it's amazing to see how, fa or how fast and how far everything has come uh, and how quickly this past year has gone uh, to see this huge building go up. Um, so looking forward to having that be complete. Uh, Mark, our next update is a date that we'd like to promote a little bit here is the state of the city. We have chosen our date. It is booked for March 23rd. Um, maybe give us a little background on state of the city here. <laughs> you know, we always have a good turnout, but, you know, it's still been maintained about 200 to 250 people. So, you know, we encourage people to come. We've got plenty of room that we can always put out more chairs for whoever's there. Um, but it's also our city exhibit expo where we have departments interact with the public. You know, if you want to go one-on-one -on -one and talk to a department head, this really is your opportunity to do it. Um, I do give an address about where we are with the city, what we're planning uh, for the upcoming year. So uh, if any of that interests you, it's going to be Monday, March 23rd at 6 o'clock over at the convention center. Doors open at 6, and I start the presentation at 6.30. And, of course, we, we recognize various uh, individuals for service on boards and commissions, but also recognize some community groups. But you get good insight into what things are going to be upcoming for the year and uh, encourage people to uh, put it on your calendar and uh, maybe show up and, and learn a little bit more about what we're up to. It's a great chance to go and meet um, the different departments and put names to faces too. Um, a lot of people tend to work within or work with people in city departments and never, never actually meet them in person. So it's great to see um, to meet people as well as to see the different projects that we're working on. So uh, definitely looking forward to that, and you'll hear more on that soon. 
Uh, and now it's that time of the show where viewers have the chance to ask City Manager Mark Roloff anything they want about things going on here in Oshkosh, and he will answer it right here on CMR. So let's go ahead and see what the question mark is this week. So this is actually a question we got on Twitter. Uh, it's kind of a hot topic right now. The question is, why doesn't the city use eminent domain on the Buckstaff site? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you know, eminent domain is used when you want to purchase a property. That's really what eminent domain is used for. Um, it's not for when you want to require somebody to clean up. And we're not interested in purchasing the site. We just want the property owners to clean it up. Uh, you know, the city has a lot of properties that we own. And it's, uh, we don't necessarily want to keep buying up private property and make it public. But what we are doing is we are going through uh, the court system uh, with First Merit Bank, which uh, is the owner of the property based on activities that they took when they uh, uh, repossessed or essentially foreclosed on that site. Um, and they've done things that clearly demonstrate that they own it. So we're pursuing that with them. For us to do eminent domain wouldn't have any real advantage for us, um, but I know a lot of people think that eminent domain is used for code enforcement action, which is what we're doing here is code enforcement, but eminent domain isn't the right tool for that. So You're not looking to acquire it and have it as the city's property. Exactly. So, uh, But we are going through the court system, and uh, there's a lot of due process that, that is required by law, and we're, we have to comply with the law on those types of things. The court is really going to determine what happens uh, in terms of determining who's the responsible party for cleaning this up. And, uh, you know, we believe it's the bank, and, and we'll, we'll pursue that with them. Okay. Any kind of timeline with that um, that we can look forward to, or is it kind of up in the air right now? I, I wish I could tell you it's going to be soon, but the reality is it's going to take some time because uh, this does go through the federal court system. The judges determine when this gets picked up. Uh, and when it, it meets their schedule, the judge has to be satisfied that all the facts are in place uh, so that, and then you have time to have people make their case and file their briefs and do all that legal stuff that, that's required to do. So, uh, you know, I'd like to say it's going to get done this year. I would love to say that, <laughs> but I just can't say that. So we have, we have to be patient. I know that drives people crazy. <laughs> Believe me, it drives me crazy that, that we're sitting there waiting, but uh, we have to let the court system uh, take its course. Great. Well, thanks, Mark. Uh, great question. If you'd like to send a question to Mark, simply email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us, or you can even shoot us uh, a question on Twitter, at City of Oshkosh, uh, and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive into the City Council meeting agenda for this Tuesday, January 13th. We'll be right back on City Manager's Report. Stay connected with Oshkosh Community Media Services and the City of Oshkosh. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube. Sign up for e-updates. More resources, including video, at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. Oshkosh Community Media is your media on your schedule. Connect with us today. Want to know what's happening in local government? Stay in the know with City of Oshkosh Government Meetings, live on TV City Cable 10, online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, and on Community Radio WOCT 101.9 FM. Miss the live coverage? No problem. Catch replays on City Cable 10. Stream online from oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, or visit youtube.com forward slash Oshkosh Community Media Services. Welcome back to 
your city manager's report and now it's that time of the show to go over the city council meeting agenda for this Tuesday, January 13th, 2015. Uh, now, Mark, the first thing that we want to talk about is a presentation at the very beginning of the uh, council meeting is from East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission, uh, and it's an update on the riverfront visioning, and this actually started last summer, correct? It did. We had a great turnout at a, a, a multitude of events mm -hmm. uh, throughout the community to, to get input on what people were looking for, uh, what they wanted to see in the future with the riverfront. You know, with the, with the riverfront having such an industrial history, it was all privately owned, uh, and the only way you got view of it was if you were an employee of a company. Mm -hmm. Now we're saying, now we're, 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 now we're pioneers in new territory, <laughs> so the whole theme was, let's be a pioneer. And uh, on December 16th, uh, last, uh, last month, they had a presentation to the Plan Commission, uh, and uh, they're going to now make a presentation to the council. Uh, just basically getting some input. Uh, this exercise that you see here was really getting people to say, what do you think the riverfront is? And it, the whole idea was it's not just along the river, it's, it's adjoining properties. And how up and down the river do you want to really focus on? Um, That's and so, an interesting exercise, too, that you were telling us about. It was a lot of fun, and, and we don't want to show the graphics on that because <laughs> it was really just squiggly lines all over the place. But, uh, you know, some people said the river front went all the way over to Menominee Park. Mm -hmm. Other people said it's really just along the river itself. Mm -hmm. So this was the consensus boundary that you kind of see that everybody put together. But pretty much, you know, from over by um, the, the mouth of the Fox River on either side, is really what people said were the riverfront, but also connecting areas like the downtown uh, Main Street. Mm -hmm. Those types of things, we say, you know, they're kind of connected to the river. So that was one exercise, but also what type of land uses do you want to see? And, um, you know, how much public access do you want to see? How much should be residential? How much commercial? Uh, you know, the, and the turnout was really good at all the events. So we had a and you know, it was a lot of turnover, so people got to go one-on-one -on -one with, with different planners from either East Central or city staff. Mm -hmm. We gave them a lot of pens, and they just took to these maps. And then East Central staff compiled all this and said, what's the consensus? What do you get a lot of uh, agreement on as, in terms of uh, uh, vision? And, you know, we've got a lot on the riverfront that's still vacant because either we've acquired it or it's been acquired by other people mm -hmm. and it'll require some assistance down the road but what do we want to see before we start building on these areas what types of things we want to uh, envision for ourselves and for the future because once it gets built 40 50 years it'll be up there at least so we want to make sure that we do it right and we've got some great assets along the river already with uh, Fox Valley Technical College and University of Wisconsin Oshkosh and what they've done in recent years with the Alumni Welcome Center, Student Wellness Center, and of course the Riverwalk that we've been putting in and investing a lot in. What do people want to see down the road? So we got a lot of uh, interest and there's a great report and I'd encourage you to tune in mm -hmm. at the very beginning on Tuesday, even if it's just for a few minutes to get an idea of what we're talking about and what we'd like to see down the road based on what the public has told us. Mm -hmm. And it's so great uh, that, you know, they're thinking beyond the shoreline here. So a lot of people, when they think riverfront, they think that's it, the river walk, that's the riverfront. But there's so much more to it with all the businesses and everything that, you know, beyond that shoreline, beyond that river walk itself. So uh, really looking forward to that presentation um, and the update on what's to come with that. Uh, Mark, our next topic here is uh, some parking lot development at Riverside Park. Uh, now, this is phase two. Phase one was done last summer, I believe. Correct. Um, and what exactly is going on with this parking lot here? Well, this is the harder phase. Mm -hmm. uh, the first phase that, of Riverside Park that was right adjacent to CP uh, was done last year. Uh, but this one is a lot of the older industrial area where a lot of fill was put in. Mm -hmm. And we've got to dig out a lot of junk. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It really is junk. Um, but you can see this was the before picture um, before any construction was done last year. And uh, now that it's, uh, it's gotten done the first phase, the part adjacent to CP is good, but the part right adjacent to the river walk and between the convention center and the Leach Amphitheater, we want to get that done now. Uh, it's a lot of pooling of water, mm -hmm. a lot of cracks, a lot of holes. It's very you know, unsightly, it's unsafe. Uh, a lot of tripping hazards. So this is what the first phase looks like. You get an idea of what we're looking for. You know, it's it's nothing fancy. It's a it's a 
paved parking lot, but but definitely just, improvement from but, the other side. Yeah, but look from the left to, to the right. The right looks so much better, and the left looks pretty ratty, mm -hmm. and it's very dangerous right now. And we want to make sure it lasts us for a long time, and we do have to get that paved. So we're trying to address those issues and uh, make sure that we're uh, get this done soon so that we can accommodate uh, the Waterfest series and uh, uh, the um, the leech. Uh, events on Tuesday night as well as some of the other events for the rest of the summer. Great uh, and so that's another big project we're looking forward to that uh, what might not seem like a big project but as a parking lot um, as well as the Boatworks property this is also going to be dealing with that this agreement here. Right the Boatworks property was the the part of the river walk that we did last year uh, back in 2014. The parking lot we actually got an additional grant from the state and this is where we're putting in a shelter and a restroom so we really want to encourage families to go down to the Boatworks property and it's really going to be an extension of Steiger Park yes. but it's going to be you're going to be able to enter it from uh, Michigan Street and so this parking lot is another addition that we're doing and uh, we're getting the engineers to give us a deal to do both of those projects at the same time and uh, it's going to be busy summer along the Riverwalk once again. It is, which is great. We like busy along the Riverwalk, uh, Mark. And our next item here uh, having to do with the North Main Street area uh, and some stormwater updates. What's that about? Well, you remember we had formed a tax recommend financing district yes. last summer to benefit uh, Bemis Healthcare Packaging with some expansion and job creation they were doing. Created over 100 jobs. And a part of it was to address stormwater in this area. And uh, this is uh, pretty much east of Jackson Street, uh, kind of in, the, it's called the Fernow Avenue Watershed, but it's that north industrial park that was really constructed about 30 years ago. And we knew that we needed to address something in the watershed. So the opportunity for the TIF district really came up at a very uh, a good time for us. This is to get the design to develop a pond out there that will help retain the water that, uh, frankly, these businesses weren't required to do 30 years ago. And if they want to expand in the future, this will enable them to expand and we will accommodate their stormwater needs uh, at, this, at a single spot mm -hmm. rather than everybody putting in a bunch of small little ponds that you've got, you do have to do a lot of little ones as opposed to one large one. It's a lot more efficient and it's gonna help the businesses be able to expand in the future and that'll help them. Yes, so kind of consolidating that so that it's easier in the future for future expansion. Yes. Great, uh, and we do have uh, later on in the agenda, there's an item referring to acquiring some property for that. We're down the road, we're gonna have to acquire some property to, to build this pond and uh, it may require some eminent domain, some, some purchasing of the land. We mm -hmm. talked about that in the first segment. Uh, this truly is eminent domain if we have to acquire it, but we're required by law to do things certain ways. And uh, the whole idea is we, we really want to get this built in 2015 or 16. Excellent. Uh, right after that, the item immediately following is an agreement for engineering services with Grummer and Associates. Uh, this is for West Fernow Avenue for concrete paving. Now, uh, this is kind of connecting a few things, yes? This is a street that doesn't exist right now. This mm -hmm. is, um, you know, normally we're, we're fixing up streets, just putting in a brand new street. This uh, shows Fernow that doesn't exist between Vinland Avenue and Jackson Street. East of Jackson is this area that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those folks want to be able to go up Highway 45. This will enable them to cut across on Fernow all the way over to Highway 45. So they, they'll be going through industrial areas, won't disrupt any commercial areas or any residential areas. Similarly, west of Vinland Avenue, you have businesses in that side of the industrial park that want to go north on Highway 41, and this will enable them to cut across going to Jackson. A lot of them use Vinland Street. Um, some of that's in the town of Oshkosh. The town of Oshkosh is actually cooperating with us to take some federal money that, that they can't otherwise use for street improvements, and they're gonna uh, allocate it to this project to help offset our costs, and that'll keep truck traffic off of Vinland Street. And there's a, a number of residential properties are on Vinland. Mm -hmm. This will keep uh, the trucks out of the residential area. So it'll really be a win-win for everybody. But brand new street and uh, long overdue. We've talked about connecting Fernow between Jackson and Vinland for a long time. Really? So it's going to be nice that we'll be able to do that. And both sides of Fernow will benefit from this 
one way or the other. Great. And is this another project we can look forward to this summer, or is that beyond that? We're hoping that we can get it done this summer. That's why we're getting the design and bidding services. But it's possible that may not happen until 16. It depends on how things progress. Great. Uh, Mark, our next uh, item here is dealing with the Menominee Park Zoo Master Plan, uh, another project which started last summer. Uh, what, what did we end up here with the Master Plan for Menominee Park Zoo? This was another one of those where we had some really great public input mm -hmm. sessions where people came in and the, the uh, consultants gave us a lot of different options to take a look at. And I don't know how the public came to a consensus, but they really did and then gave some good direction to the plan commission. But the whole idea is, what do we want the Menominee Park Zoo to look like in 10 and 20 years? You know, we've just replaced our wolf, wolves because the wolf exhibit's always been very popular, but you know, what else do we have? And it's really interesting because one of the largest uh, areas that take up the zoo is the water area, mm -hmm. but we have very little devoted towards water. And the overwhelming consensus was that we need to do something with aquatic species, wetlands, those things that are very much Wisconsin and Oshkosh oriented, but we hadn't done enough of. So they're, they've got some drawings about things they want to do to make the park uh, zoo look a little more um, like a cross section of Wisconsin. And you're going to see that with some of the plans. Uh, we've got a great plan that's already gone through the parks board. Uh, now it's going to the council and the whole idea is for them to approve the plan. And then it enables us to be eligible for grants that may come up. Mm -hmm. It also helps us with foundations, people that may want to donate to the, to the zoo. Uh, this sets us up for the future. Doesn't mean we're going to get it all done. In fact, it may take 20 years to get all this stuff done, but the idea is you lay the groundwork early. And you have your priorities straight in a way. Uh, and really, another great example of using those public input meetings and how important those are to creating master plans like this. Absolutely. Uh, so, Mark, our, uh, one of our final events here, or our final topics, is approval of special event for the Southwest Rotary for Menominee Park for the Battle on Bago. Now, this is uh, another example of Oshkosh being event city, but usually it's in this, the summer that we have all these events. This is one that's already in February. We start in, we start <laughs> in the winter, and this is going to be a great uh, ice fishing tournament. Uh, Southwest Rotary does Battle on Bago, and they take the proceeds and, and donate it to a bunch of different causes. So it's a very positive event, and it's just one of those examples that uh, our special event city does not sleep in the winter. We're going to be busy starting now uh, all the way through the summer. Yes, as well as a few other special events on the agenda that we can look forward to as well. Uh, and Mark, our final item here is uh, direction to staff on open liquor licenses. Uh, we talked about this in the past a bit. We put a call out and what was the result? What did we get here? Well, we have three vacant liquor licenses at this time. In addition, we have one that's set aside for Marion Road. And the whole idea was to say, look, we have three liquor licenses. Is anybody interested? We have six interested parties. Some of them may not qualify completely, um, but the whole idea is to get some direction from council on what process they want to fall, follow. I am going to be recommending that we hold a couple of those in reserve for um, some projects that may have some greater benefit that we aren't aware of right now, particularly with everything we've been talking about with riverfront visioning. We do want to maybe save some for either the riverfront or so for some major corridors that we haven't identified yet. So I'm going to be throwing that out to council, seeing what kind of reaction we get, and then we'll see how many they actually want to award to any of these six interested parties. It's competitive. It's, there's no guarantee that, that anybody gets a license. It's not if it's open and you're in line, you get it. You have to demonstrate that it's worthy. Yes, and I think that's a great point, uh, too, is for people to remember that there are three licenses, but three licenses may not be distributed that day. Exactly. So that's going to do it for this uh, episode of City Manager's Report. We are all out of time. Mark, thank you again, as always, for joining us today. Glad to. Again, the City Council meeting is this Tuesday, January 13th at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on City Cable 10 and on our website, oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. You can also listen to it online at 101.9 WOCT, which is also now online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Don't forget, if you have a question for Mark, send it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us or on Twitter at City of Oshkosh, and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. As always, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.